So now that we've talked about the more serious business and the more uh, the more dire business of the recent assassination attempt of Donald Trump, uh, I wanted to take a moment to um, talk about something a little less um, menacing and worrisome, but just some food for thought. And that's this thing that we, these things we see periodically, you know, there is a huge, huge uh, red pill uh, ethos in this country that we have to unfortunately contend with that pushes some really, I think, cynical and paranoid ideas about women and relationships. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm hardly the most politically correct person on the planet, as you know. But um, I want to. It is just kind of my uh, my goal to oppose these toxic orthodoxies wherever they arise. And so, with regards to this, what brought it to my mind is I was watching this video earlier. That's one of these montage videos you see where this was on Twitter, and it was guys uh, like the whoever the dude bros are that make these videos, they were going up and interviewing women at a nightclub and asking them, like, how much money does your uh, man have to make in order to have you as his girlfriend or you as his wife? How much money should he, does he have to make? And they would all usually say something in the range of eighty dollars to $100,000 was the minimum threshold, the minimum uh, buy-in. Uh, uh, the minimum barrier for entry or the minimum threshold for entry to be, to have them as a girlfriend or wife. And this is all presented to us as part of a campaign to make us all very cynical about what love and relationships have to offer us nowadays. And I wanted to try to offer some perspective on the young women who say things like that, to try to kind of counteract that malignant cynicism that is produced by this. people, The people who put these messages out there have a vested interest in promoting, be it whether it's their Red Pill podcast or their men's self-improvement seminars or their trad Catholic lifestyle or whatever it is, they have a vested interest in making you think that this is some kind of um, baseline toxicity with modern women. And it's not. I want you to stop and think about something. And what, what made me think about this is, by the way, um, I've done a, a number of videos talking about, you know, autistic men, me being autistic myself, um, autistic young men having unrealistic expectations about what relationships are like. And thinking in that same vein, I wanted to address this matter as well. And the thing is, all of the young women who are saying this, saying these things in these nightclub videos are very, very, very young women. Legal adults, we would hope, but obviously very young, very young, still with that girlish kind of pixie tone of voice and everything. Yeah, this, this kind of voice like this, you know, that sort of thing still all of that bubbliness and all of that. And instead of, you know, going on and on about how this is somehow evidence of women seeing men in a very toxic, uh, utilitarian light and love and romance being dead and all that sort of thing, I instead, I wanna stop and point out that these are, because these are very, very young women, they are very naive about their sexual marketplace value. And you have to, and obviously you have to understand there are women out there for whom their sole priority in life is the man that they're going to be with in the long run. Now, don't get me wrong, some people are just incredibly shallow. I'm not, dis I'm not discounting that. But the idea that there's this mass widespread consensus among, uh, among women, among desirable women, that you have to make a certain amount of money is bupkis and it's overinflated by videos like these that take advantage of the fact that these very young women are probably extremely naive about what they can actually ex realistically expect out of relationships. 
also the uh, the idea that a man needs to make eighty thousand minimum eighty thousand dollars just to date you is highly highly unrealistic. It says that suggests that that suggests somebody who doesn't really have a firm grasp on what money can uh, what money can buy and what certain different amounts of money can accomplish. Uh, you're going if you are to, to the young women out there I will tell you that um, you the the men you date as far as your uh, boyfriends uh, perhaps not you you will not these men would not be able to support you and children on a single income but a man making 30 thirty thousand a year can make you feel very nicely pampered as a girlfriend I mean it's not um, it's it, he doesn't have to be in the upper echelons of income. Uh, to be doing that. But anyway, the thing is, you know, when we're young and we're kids, we all think we can conquer the world because we haven't dealt with real life yet. And, you know, we have, uh, you have so often the, uh, you know, the um, the the young man who aspires to go play Major League Baseball and uh, finds himself uh, doing well as a high school baseball coach and things like that. Uh, you know, you find the more realistic version of what you wanted to be, uh, the realistic real-world version of what you wanted to be as a kid. You know, for me, that was starting a band that would be as big as Metallica, Queen, and Pink Floyd combined. <laughs> and... Um, you know, don't get me wrong, there's, that's still an aspiration for me in the sense that I would still have, I mean, I'm exaggerating there, obviously, but I would still love to have, you know, my band blow up really big and be able to tour stadiums and do all of that stuff. Um, I would still, I would still love to be able to do all of that, and I still look for opportunities to be able to do stuff like that. But um, it's, you know, it comes with, with maturity comes an ability to understand what it is that I want out of all of those, uh, out of all of those things. What do I want? I want to be able to make music for a living. I want to be able to entertain people for a living, all of those things. And there are, uh, you know, lesser versions of that that are still very fulfilling and can still be enjoyed even as I, you know, um, e even as I, I try to hit that, you know, spend my life trying to hit that Grand Slam home run that will realize that epic dream, you know, there's still a realistic life for myself that I can enjoy all the while. And you have to be able to enjoy that life because uh, if you don't learn to enjoy life in the moment, then when you do realize your dreams, you're not going to enjoy it because you never learn to enjoy life in the moment. And that includes in the moment of when you're huge and famous and all that. So there's that. Bringing that around to young women who are, uh, you know, young women for whom being that wife or that uh, being that wife and everything, that's, that's their goal, man. That's their Metallica. Uh, that, that's their, their opening for Metallica or whatever is being able to, you know, fi finding that husband, perfect husband and everything. They are having those same naive, youthful delusions of grandeur that we all do. And I think it is deeply unfair to approach women that probably have, young women who probably have very, very, very little understanding of how relationships actually work, what will be expected of them in a relationship in terms of emotional support, in terms of, um, uh, in, in terms of, you know, mutual emotional support, mutual, um, uh, mutual interpersonal connection, all of these things. They have an extremely naive understanding of uh, everything that goes into relationships at that level, of what it means to really form an emotional connection with some, uh, an emotional connection with someone like that, they probably have not uh, 
come up and come face to face with the reality that uh, being with a man that makes eighty to a hundred thousand a year doesn't mean shit if he's a an awful loathsome human being and that kind of thing. They've not really confronted those realities. It's just it, it really is just a matter of like. Um, you know, their, their, their concept of what they want is very superficial because they've not gone out into the real world enough to really experience the realities of what they want. They have no, pers no realistic perspective in all of this. And so I really do think it is unfair to, unfair and, um, very cynical and misleading to try to make it seem like uh, to try to get this message across to men that they have to make eighty to a hundred thousand dollars a year just to have a girlfriend now, that's bupkis. That's bullshit. Like I said, I've, <laughs> um, uh, while I, um, you know, I, I do okay for myself. I've certainly, uh, I certainly don't make eighty to a hundred thousand dollars a year, and I've had girlfriends and I've dated and all of that stuff, and it's uh, completely. Uh, I've had relationships, and it's completely ridiculous and absurd to uh, to try to convince men that what for whatever nefarious motive you have whether or not you want whether you want to convince men that women just aren't are just not worth it or that they're uh, they're all a bunch of succubuses and you need to you know, or that you need to read this book on you know doing whatever to improve yourself and turn into some kind of uh, combination of um, you know, some kind of combination of Elon Musk and Iceberg Slim just to have a, you know, a female partner and all of this stuff. Whatever their motives are in all of this, it is extremely misleading to portray that, portray women that way. Go find a woman who is, go find a 32-year-old woman who is, uh, who has been through some real relationships knows what's actually expected of uh, both partners in an adult relationship, has a realistic understanding, and get you can get a beautiful 32, get a stunningly beautiful, gorgeous 32-year-old woman. And I promise you, just because she's been through some life experiences and all of that, she will have a more realistic and more mature uh, understanding of what to expect in relationships. But all of those women are convinced they've they've had some superficial, those young women have had some superficial success with men just because they're the latest generation of uh, beautiful young women at the height of their sexual viability. And so they've convinced they've convinced themselves just like, you know, um, uh, you know, just like, say, some aspiring musicians convince themselves that they're going to be the next Metallica after they get a, they get a really good response at one or two local gigs, they've convinced themselves <clears throat> on the basis of that, that as soon as uh, Prince William gets one look at them, he's going to dump Kate and go for, you know, dive into bed with them or something like that. They just haven't been hit with reality yet. And, uh, you know, what, what they need is not our contempt. They just need our sympathy. They're going to grow up like the rest of us. And I, I say that because if there is one thing I'm tired of in this life and in this culture, it's just cynicism. We have completely OD'd on bitter, nihilistic cynicism. And this is just one manifestation of that. It's just like, you know, and it's it's always from this very stilted perspective. It's just like, you know, the most one of the most vile podcasts on uh T on on the on, on, on the internet right now is the at whatever podcast. I mean, like, I remember um, you know, well, put it this way, somebody needs to invent uh or create a browser app that blocks the at whatever podcast. I don't I just Anytime I see some young, naive bimbo about to try to uh, answer one of the asinine, loaded questions that they ask women on that podcast in front of that backdrop of the, that says at whatever over and over and over again, anytime I scroll past one of those things, I just kind of throw up in my mouth a little bit. It's just I don't want to hear it. And it's always stilted in such a way that... 
you know, they'll have, say, for example, a young woman that's doing OnlyFans. You know, I saw a clip where this young woman's doing OnlyFans, and she's talking about all the money she's making and how, how much she's enjoying it and all that. And then they get this, some ass, they, uh, Charlie Kirk, you know, they'll have, it was Charlie Kirk, or they'll have some asshole like Charlie Kirk, but they had Charlie Kirk on there, and he says, I just want to know, what's your relationship like with your father? And uh, she uh, and she says, oh, you know, she said something like, oh, I, I hate my father. And he said, I knew it like that. You know, that is not some that, that, that is not some gotcha moment for Charlie Kirk. That is them taking advantage of someone who didn't realize so someone who naively thought she was going into a balanced discussion and didn't realize they were picking her. They were picking an unknown person like her and a name personality like Charlie Kirk to stack the deck in exactly that reason so they could get, for exactly that reason, so they could get exactly that response they wanted. And so, <clears throat> I, I, as much as I, you know, again, I don't, I don't know the magic combination that's going to get you the girlfriend of your dreams and all of that, but just don't let these don't let these these things that are basically the dating life singles life equivalent of a James O'Keefe expose uh, ruin your hopes for finding a, a young you know finding a girlfriend and a very desirable girlfriend and all of that. Uh, again, like I said, it, you, you you don't have to make eighty to a hundred thousand dollars a year for women to be interested in you. And uh, the women who the women who still demand eighty to a hundred thousand dollars minimum after encountering the real world and after encountering real life and finding out what's actually involved in real mature adult relationships, you don't want those women anyway. You do not want them. Just you trust me on that. You, you, if you you don't want those women. So. What you need, you know, the one, the woman you want is going to be the woman that's happy with living with you in a box. Because if she's not happy living with you in a box, she's not going to be happy with you living in a mansion. And so any woman that doesn't understand that is either incredibly naive and inexperienced, which is likely, or is just so vain and shallow that you couldn't possibly begin to want them. Don't buy into the idea that th this this there are so many people on that right wing red pill side of the, the divide that have such a vested interest in convincing you that uh, you know modern women are somehow uniquely broken and all of that. Uh, we are. I, I do think there are a lot of reasons why men and women are having trouble relating to each other now. You know outstanding among them being that the current generation is is the generation raised entirely in the realm, in the world of social media screens and dating apps and does not have a real concept of being approached uh you know, being approached romantically and that kind of thing and a lot of other things like that there's a lot of cynicism in the world right now but there are things where we need to stop and take a step back and realistically think about what we're being exposed to, uh, and this this nonsense, this crap that they're they're trying to push on us, is just not it's it's not reality. It's not realistic, and it's not uh, it's it's really not helpful. And it's not helping anyone or anything. So, anyway, that was just my observation on that. Hopefully, that um, cheer helps cheer people up a little bit.